guys, so I thought I would go ahead and do a video about preparing for the IVF process and things I wish I would have known before we started our IVF process. IVF is a one day at a time process. If for any reason they see fit, they could cancel your cycle. Be aware that your body has to be reaching those milestones every single day when you're in the process. Because if you're not making follicles, then you won't have an egg retrieval. That's not to scare you, that's just to prepare you to be very patient during this process. Keep your calendar clear. In addition to this process being a one day at a time process, it's also a very time consuming process in that you, you might be asked to come in tomorrow at 7 a.m. This whole thing is, is very precise and it's all up to how your body's progressing. They'll call you and say, your estrogen level looks great, so come in on Tuesday at 8 a.m. Um, oh crap, well I have a meeting on Tuesday at 8 a.m. It doesn't matter, you're not going to that meeting. <laughs> you're going to the doctor. I think it's probably a good idea to let your boss know that you're going through this process just so they know why you're late to work, why you have to call in sick because you, you can't put pants on. It would be a lot easier on you if you let them know. It would just, it would be less stressful. They'd be more understanding of what you're going through, hopefully. Limit your commitments. Don't plan any trips. Don't buy plane tickets. I, I was so thankful that when I was doing my stems and everything, just being able to be home and have no commitments. I am taking a summer class right now, but it's online. I'm able to just be at home, do my shots, not have to really go anywhere or do anything. So. What it takes to mature an egg is a three month process. It's not just to have your period, you mature an egg and ovulate it, and then you have another period. It's not a one month process. The life of the particular egg is actually a three month process. So keeping that in mind, the changes that you are going to be making in preparation for a healthy IVF cycle and growing healthy eggs is technically a three month process. Save your moolah. You pay up front before you start your stems for the whole cycle, so you pay the price up front. What they don't tell you about IVF is that the stem medication is not part of the IVF cost, nor is the PGS, which is the pregenetic screening. They test the embryos to see if they have any um, chromosomal abnormalities. Those two items are not covered in the big chunk of price that you pay for the IVF cycle. The IVF medication, mine was about $1,700, and that was all the medications, all the shots for egg retrieval, and then also the progesterone, the estradiol, and all of the progesterone and oil shots that go after egg retrieval and leading up to transfer. Add that into your cost of the total if you want to do genetic screening, it's not mandatory, but we, we've we had recurrent losses, so we opted to do that. The majority of miscarriages are due to the chromosomal abnormalities. We didn't want to go through this whole process, and the time and the investment that you're making physically, financially, emotionally, everything, only for it to result in a miscarriage. We wanted to get those embryos tested. In addition to paying for IVF, I highly recommend continuing to stash money in a savings. If you get pregnant, 
amazing. Now you have to buy a pregnancy pillow, little bits and bobs for your pregnancy. You're gonna have extra expense and not to mention the doctor's appointments and things. Continue to save. And then after your pregnancy, you're gonna have a baby. So you're gonna need baby stuff. You know, you're gonna need a crib. You're gonna need boppies and pacifiers and such. Another really important tip is to be as healthy as you can be. You and your partner should be taking vitamins every single day. The woman should definitely be taking the prenatal vitamin. Um, your husband should be taking a multivitamin just so he's staying healthy. I highly recommend exercising even if it's just power walking or walking your dog a couple extra times a day. These things, they're setting you up for healthy eggs, healthy pregnancy. My first tip for nutrition is organic as much as possible. Now more than ever during this IVF process when you're creating eggs, on a cellular level it matters so much what you're consuming because the proteins that you're consuming and the, the amino acids that you're consuming are going towards building those little bitty eggs and so you have more chance of getting nice mature plump juicy eggs if you shower your body with nutrition avoid saturated fats processed food sugar things to eat definitely eggs avocados olive oil nuts and seeds beans legumes, proteins, lean meats, chicken, pork, fish, leafy greens. The darker the green, the better. Another tip is regular chiropractic care. I have been going to a chiropractor regularly for years. I have sciatica, which I hear gets much worse during pregnancy, which sounds great. But it's also so good for your body. Your spine has so many spinal nerves running through it that run to every part of your body. And when you get an adjustment, it just kind of opens all those channels back up. Or your liver functions improve, your uterus function improves. It affects everything and I swear by it. So I read a book called It Starts with the Egg. This book talks about the dangers of BPA and phthalates and other toxins. BPA is a plastici plasticizer that they put to make plastics. Phthalates are endocrine disruptors. They mess with your hormone production. They mess with the way your reproductive organs work. And this book is pretty amazing and it's written by a woman who has a degree in molecular biotechnology and biochemistry. Personally, after I read this book, I threw away all of my plastic Tupperware, plastic cups, plastic mixing bowls, and cutting boards. I threw it all away. It makes you really mad that those things are legally able to be put in food packaging and things that our orange juice comes in and the lining of tin cans. BPA is actually banned from children's toys. It's not banned from food packaging. I, it's shocking. So phthalates, they are contained in everything. Makeup, shampoo and conditioner, body wash, toothpaste, everything has it. So I replaced all of my makeup with Honest Beauty makeup and I really love it. My skin has actually been so much better. Those are things to really consider. I recommend reading this book because it just, it explains in more detail as to why those things are so harmful. If you are gonna replace your shampoo and conditioner, I went straight out to Whole Foods and bought all the stuff there. And then like a week later, I found all the same exact things at TJ Maxx and Marshalls. So I was like, what? 
And that's where I buy all my stuff now. They have the Jason brand, Pacifica, Alba Botanics, and Ondalu brand. So I buy all that stuff at TJ Maxx and Marshalls now. I have a little bit of information for the men. Be very patient. This whole thing is emotional. The hormones, the birth control pills. I did not do well on the birth control pills, to say the least. The injections were great. I mean, I felt great on the injections, but some people don't. The majority of this, the IVF process is on a woman. The woman having to do the shots, to do the ultrasounds and the blend work. It really helps when your partner is involved and when they can contribute or at least in the know about the process and when they know what's going to be going on. It means a lot. My husband had to be very patient. <laughs> I know it was hard on him, but he just really had to be patient through it. And just be as supportive as you can be because your partner is going through having to stab themselves in the stomach every single day, how many ever times a day. Just be a cheerleader, be there. I just liked my husband standing next to me while I was doing it. It just felt like he was there for me. It felt like I was being supported and that I wasn't doing it alone. To get organized. Get a planner, get a calendar, because it's doctor's appointments, different times, and it's spontaneous. So you, you have to be so organized or you're not going to make it. The people who struggle to get pregnant have an advantage because we have time on our hands. We have plenty of time to clean out that guest room or clean out the craft room, start doing these things. I mean, you're, you're preparing to have a baby, so start moving in that direction. So get organized, get prepared. Before the egg retrieval, I cleaned my house. I knew that when I got home from my procedure, I would want to get in bed with clean sheets, a fresh, clean room to go into and lay around because it took me a week and a couple days to recover from that procedure. I had ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, so I, I think it took me a little bit longer to recover, but you never know. A lot of people get that because they get overstimulated from the medication. Go to the grocery store before your egg retrieval and get you some soups or make some like meals and freeze them or whatever because the day you have your egg retrieval you should have a caregiver with you. you um, my husband took off work and was home all day and he was able to go get us food and do whatever I needed him to do but then the next day he had to go back to work and I was on my own so I was still in quite a state. I wish I would have had something I could have just heated up really quick or even walking around was really uncomfortable. Um, so it's not a bad idea for them to take two days off or have a friend come over and hang out with you or whatever. I've made this video quite long enough, but the last um, tip I would have for your whole IVF journey before you start is to document your journey. I am documenting my journey with videos, with pictures, and I have an Instagram that um, I started so that I could connect with other people that are going through the same things, but we aren't telling our families that we're doing this. We're not trying to be secretive, we just, we've had an ectopic pregnancy before and we shared the joy of oh we're pregnant with our families and then like two days later after my doctor's appointment the most devastating thing ever is we had to go back and tell our families we're not pregnant my husband and i both maintain a really solid front of we don't want kids it's just easier to say 
that you don't want kids, so people stop asking you when you're gonna have kids. This video in particular is for you guys. It's for, it's an, more of an informative piece than anything else, but our other videos are so that we can share this journey with our families and they can see what we went through and they can see um, everything we had to go through and they can feel like they're a part of it. I also started a blog you know, this is an exciting process, and so because we aren't sharing it with our families, it's cool to, like, connect with other people going through the same thing you're going through, and it's so nice to be able to share it with other people. Also, maybe your baby will want to see all your memories someday. Maybe you'll want to share it with them how much you wanted them and everything you had to go through to bring them into the world. You'll want to document it. Start a blog, start an Instagram, start a journal, start a photo album, make a little box of all your hospital bracelets. Those are my tips. Sorry it was so long. Yeah, I really hope this helps you. If you have any questions, you can just comment. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you have. Have a great day.